Hi, welcome back to MAT 181 Trig Functions. Today we're going to discuss section 2.1. This is on page 46, if you have a textbook. If not, just make sure you pay attention. We're going to talk about acute angles. We're going to talk about co-functions. And then we're going to spend a lot of time on special angles. OK, so we talked last time about a, a triangle like this. And we said this is a 90 degree angle. And we want to find the sine of theta, or we could call it the sine of A. Maybe instead of calling these theta, let's erase this out. Let's call this the sine of A. Cosine of A, tangent of A, cosecant of A, secant of A, cotangent of A. Okay, so let's take a look at A. What was our definition? The sine was Y over R, huh? Oh, let's look at this drawing a little bit more. If we're looking from this angle going out this way, this side would be the opposite. This is what we call the opposite to that angle right there. And this would be our hypotenuse, because we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to find it. And this side we call the adjacent. I'm going to abbreviate these. We're just using the first letter because it's it's a little bit less writing. <clears throat> so the sine, instead of saying y over x, is really the opposite, abbreviated this way, over the hypotenuse. The cosine, instead of being x over r, will now become the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The tangent, the tangent is y over x. And the tangent would be the opposite over the adjacent. So, one way we can remember these is sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So katoa. So katoa. And the easy way to remember it, sine opposite hypotenuse. Cosine adjacent hypotenuse. Tangent, opposite, and adjacent. And of course, these functions are just reciprocals. So if you know the sine of A, you know the cosecant of A. It's just this thing flipped over R over Y, or simply the hypotenuse over the opposite. Okay, the secant is the cosine, you know, the reciprocal. So it's uh, R over X or hypotenuse over adjacent. We usually use the first three, but you know sometimes it's occasionally we will use these uh, because the reason we use the top three, the sine, cosine, and tangent, is because they're on your calculator. You don't have the cosecant, the secant, and the cotangent. But this one would be X over Y, right? Just flipping it over, adjacent over opposite. So if you know the first three, it's not too hard to find the other three. <clears throat> now, that was the sign of A, okay? If we're looking at angle B, then this side would be the opposite, and this side would become the adjacent. Let's draw that. 
the sign is always the opposite over the hypotenuse, but it depends where, how you're looking at this triangle. This is still a right triangle. We can also look at this. And if we project it down, this side now becomes the opposite. This becomes the adjacent. The hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. It doesn't change. Okay, so this always stays the same, hypotenuse. This becomes the adjacent, this becomes the opposite if we're looking down. So project yourself as looking straight out there. That's always opposite the angle. So usually what I do is I find the opposite, I find the hypotenuse. There's only one left. It's got to be the adjacent. <clears throat> so let's look at an actual problem here. Suppose we had this drawing. I'm just going to use the one out of the book. <clears throat> we have this angle. This is angle A, B, C. <clears throat> when we're listing sides, the sides are always opposite the angle. This is side A. And we use lowercase for that. This is angle B. This is side B. This is angle C, this is side C. C always goes with a 90 degree angle. So C is always your 90 degrees, right here. Okay, so they gave us some values here. They told us that this side was seven and this side was 24. If I knew those two sides, how could I find this side if I didn't know it? Well, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. And then C equals simply the square root of that. So C would equal 24 squared plus 7 squared. Of course, you could use your calculator 24 squared plus 7 squared, add it up, and C would equal. Uh, when you take the square root of that, 25. So we can always determine any of these sides by using the Pythagorean theorem. Sometimes you have to use, you know, you're looking for side A or B, the square root of C squared minus B squared. If you're looking for side B, it would be the square root of C squared minus A squared. So we can find C, we can find A, we can find B. You know, just for using a little algebra and rewriting. Okay. So let's list these uh, angles here. Angle A, the sine of A. The sine of A is the opposite over the hypotenuse. It's simply 7 over 25, and you have to memorize these. You're going to be using them a lot. You just have to memorize opposite over hypotenuse. So, so co, cosine of A adjacent over hypotenuse is equal to adjacent would be 24. I should label these are opposite adjacent hypotenuse, because I'm looking this way. Shoot it in there in a way. Okay, so adjacent over hypotenuse would be 24 over 25. And finally, the tangent of A would be what? The opposite over the, uh, adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent, opposite, adjacent. I just look at these and so it would be 7 over 24. 7 over 24. Now you can find the other functions by just flipping these over. Cosecant 25 over 7, secant 25 over 24, tangent 24 over 7. Or reciprocals, so, you know, you can find those easy. Let's find the sine of B. Let's go with B now. 
the cosine of B and the tangent of B. All right, so we're getting an angle B, we're going to go this way. This is still 24, but this now becomes the opposite. This is still the hypotenuse, so this has to be the adjacent. So if I was working at angle B, I still want the opposite. And now the opposite is a little sloppy there, 24. And the hypotenuse is 25. The cosine, the cosine of B, or unit angle B, is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So Katoa, cosine, adjacent, over hypotenuse. So adjacent, 7, 25th. Notice, what do you notice here? 7 over 25, 7 over 25, 25, 24. They're kind of opposites of each other. And then the tangent, when it's the tangent, just to stop numbers, tangent is going to be 24 over 7. Or it's going to be the adjacent, opposite over the adjacent. Always the opposite over the adjacent. So what? Tangent, opposite over adjacent. Okay, so that kind of gives you an idea of these kind of things, a little bit of fun. And, uh, you know, you can find the other functions by just using the reciprocals. All right, let me look at a problem here. Let me draw another one for you. Uh, let me draw a problem that looks like this. And I'm going to make up some values here. I don't know. Let's call this uh, 35. Let's call this 30. And I don't know this measure right here. So <clears throat> C squared. Let's, let's look at this angle right here. What do you want to call this angle right here? Let's call this angle A. What would this angle be? This would have to be your right angle. This would be C. So this has to be B. Okay. This is side A. This is side C. This has to be side B. So B equals the square root of C squared, because that's the longest side, minus A squared. B equals the square root of 35 squared minus 30 squared. B equals, I'm going to use my calculator, 35 squared, 35 times 35, 1,225. I just made up this problem. So I don't know. It's going to come out. <clears throat> 30 is 30 times 3,900. I can do that in my head. So B is going to be the square root of 90 from 225, let's see, 5, 2, 3. B will be the square root of 325. So using my calculator, I'm going to hit second up arrow. No, I'm not. I'm going to hit second x squared. If I hit second x squared on this calculator, that will give me the square root. And I want to put in, there's a parentheses. I'm going to put in 325 and it equal. That comes out to 18 point something. So we just go round it off to 18. Let me put B equals 18. <clears throat> now, what I want to do is I want to find the sine of B. So I see this is kind of twisted around, but we can still do it. The sine of B is the opposite over the hypotenuse, it's 18 over 30. And of course, if I wanted to, I could reduce that. I'm not gonna, or I could change it to a decimal even. Let's find the cosine of B. Cosine of B, again, if this, if this is the opposite, and this is the adjacent, this is the hypotenuse. What I was saying, 18 over 35, here's your hypotenuse. See, maybe it would be good to label these. My mistake, see, you want to be careful, going too fast. This is your adjacent. 
opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. So the, the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Here's your 30 over 35. And of course, your tangent is your opposite over your adjacent, 18 over 35. Opposite over adjacent, 18 over 30. All right, there we go. That should be correct. So, kind of an easy way to do it. Kind of fun. Okay, let's talk about co-functions. Let's look at a right triangle. This is 90 degrees. This angle is 30. What is this angle? Well, it would have to add up to 90. So that would be 60. So what we do here is as a little trick, the sine of 30 degrees is equal to the cosine of 60. How do we get that? The sine of 30 equals the cosine of 90 minus 30. So if I know the sine, I can figure out the cosine pretty fast. The sine of 30 and the cosine of 60 are the same. Later on, we'll figure out the sine of 30 is 1 half, and the cosine of 60 is 1 half. They're both the same. But we'll get into that in just a few minutes. OK? So these are, what about the cosine? The cosine of 30 is equal to the sine of 30, 60. These two angles will add up to 90. And these are reciprocal, they're like buddies, cosine and sine. Remember, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, they're buddies. Okay, another group of buddies are the cotangent and the tangent. The tangent of 30, is equal to the tangent, what do you think? 60, or 90 minus 30. I mean the cotangent, 60. They're buddies, and vice versa, we could write it. And finally, the secant of 30 is equal to the cosecant of 60. And vice versa. You put the cosecant of 30 is equal to the secant of 60. You know, so these two angles have to add up to 90. So let's try a couple problems here without the drawing. Uh, example two, it says the cosine of 52, write its cofunction. Okay, its cofunction is the sine. And all I gotta do is take 90, take away 52. That would be 38, don't forget tomorrow, of 38. See, these both have to add up. Okay, what if I do the tangent of 71? Its cofunction is the cos tangent of 90 minus 71 is. 19. The secant of 24 is equal to the cosecant of 90 minus 24. 66. 66 degrees. So pretty easy to do. Huh? Okay, but can they make them a little tougher? Of course, they can make them tougher. Are we kidding? Here they have one little identity, and they said, okay, the cosine of theta plus four degrees is equal to the sine, because they're cofunctions, of 30, I mean, three uh, theta, not 30. 3 theta plus 2 degrees. And they want to figure out what is theta. 
Okay, well, to find theta, you know, this looks kind of confusing, but what do we know? The cosine and the sine, this angle and this angle have to add up to 90 degrees. So we can say theta, <clears throat> theta plus four degrees plus three theta plus two degrees equals 90 degrees. Pretty cool. So one theta plus three theta is four theta. Four degrees plus two degrees, six degrees. You always have to have an X equals 90. Take the six from both sides, minus six. Four theta equals 84. Divide both sides by four. Voila. Theta is equal to 21 degrees. And we figured it out. Pretty cool. Huh? So it's, it's pretty easy to do that too hard. You just use a little kind of common sense. Okay, let's try another one. I'm going to give you this one. The tangent of alpha. equals the cotangent of alpha plus ten. How are we doing? This is a symbol for alpha. We'll be using alpha a lot in the beta on the alphabet. So what do you want to know about these, these two functions? should add up to 90 degrees. So it's kind of neat to use a little different symbol, two alpha plus ten. You can press your parents and things like that. Subtract ten. Two alpha is eighty. Alpha is what? Forty. Pretty cool, huh? So we can figure out what alpha is real fast. And that's the idea behind it. All right, let's look at something else that's real exciting and fascinating that we have to do. Here we're going to look at special angles. Okay, there's two special angles we want to, well, there's three. Okay, this is just something you kind of memorize. Let me show you a little trick, maybe. These are angles we use many, many times. Drop it. Okay, this is supposed to be the right angle. This is 30 degrees, so we know this is 60. Okay. The relationships of the side is this. They're in a proportion. So the smallest side is in the ratio of one. So we call this one. The longest side, two, and this side right here, square root of three. One, two, square root of three. One, two, square root of three. That is the relationship of the sides of this thing. Suppose I wanted to find the sine of 30 degrees. The sine of 30 degrees is equal to, and that's what, remember I showed you this a little bit before this, the sine of 30 is opposite over hypotenuse, one half. The sine of 30 is 130, it's one half. If you use your calculator and you hit sine and make sure your calculator is seven degrees, the sine of 30, and you hit sine 30, it should come out 0 0.5, 0, 0, 0, because it's a half. We, we want to use fractionals. We don't want decimals right now. Later on, we'll be using decimals. But right now, we're kind of just using fractions. Okay, another one that comes up quite a bit is it's kind of the same idea. Thank you. 
this is a, excuse me, this is, oh, maybe come down. This is a 60, 30, 90. Again, the smallest side is one, the longest side is two, and this little side is three. So we can see the sine of 60. What is the sine of 60? Opposite. <clears throat> Radical 3 over 2. Pretty cool. One other one that we're going to use in the, before we get too far is the 45. If this is 45, this has to be 45. The relationship of the sides is one, one, square root of two. One, one, square root of two. One and one is two. One, one, square root of two. Square root of two is about 1.414. 1 square root of three is about 1.7, something, three, two, I think. Okay. So, so it's one, one, square root of two. One, two, square root of three. All right, so with this in mind, we're gonna construct a little fancy dancy little table for us. Okay. Let's write down. The sine of theta, the cosine of theta. And you're going to be, you, you want to make this table because you're going to be using it a lot. I could write it out for you and give you a hand up. But it's good if you make it yourself because then you see this relationship cotangent of theta, secant of theta. The cosine goes with secant and then cosecant. Okay, he's going to go. And we're going to look at some special angles. Right there. And of course, when you draw, you probably draw straight lines. My, my board mode, that's what I have. Oh. I was playing it on the on the board. I got straight that is. Perfect. Okay. We're gonna look at a 30 degree angle. That's what theta is gonna equal. 60 degrees. Theta. 45 degrees. Theta. Okay. Look at it as dry. The side. Let's put down opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. What is the side of 30 degrees? One half. Opposite over hypotenuse. What is the cosine of? of uh, 30 degrees, cosine of 30, adjacent over hypotenuse, radical 3 over 2. What is the tangent? 1 over the square root of 3, but we don't want to write it that way. We want to rationalize radical 3 over radical 9, which is 3. Now, we know the cotangent is going to be this flipped over. So 1 over radical 3 would be radical 3 over 1, or just radical 3. This would be 2 over radical 3, but we don't want to keep it secant, cosine. So radical 3 would be 2. Let's rationalize. That would be 2 radical 3 over 3. And then the cosecant, 2 over 1, 2. Okay. 
But now I want to write the 60. What's the sign of 60? Radical opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite hypotenuse. Take a look and see what happens. Radical 3 over 2. Well, what's the sign? Adjacent. I mean, what's the cosine? Adjacent over hypotenuse. One half. Do you see a pattern? Just like the co-functions. Just like the co-functions. See? So, rather than having to knock your brains out, one over, this is a, change it, radical three over three. This is radical three. Switch to two over uh, two radical three over three. See, so you want a list of things going across like that it makes it a lot easier. Now let's look at the forty-five. One over the square root of two. I'm going to do this in black. Rationalize. Radical two over square root of four, two. You're doing pretty good at using uh, simple square roots. What about the cosine? Adjacent over hypotenuse. This was the opposite. Adjacent over same thing. Tangent. Tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Opposite of the, over the adjacent, one over one, one. Reciprocal, but what's the reciprocal of one? one? What's the reciprocal of one over the square root of two? Square root of two over one. This is the square root of two over one. So these, these we're gonna be using in the next lesson too, quite a bit. We're gonna use these quite often. So I wanna make sure that you can use these kind of things and be able to do them. Um, so if I ask you for the tangent of 30, all you gotta do is refer to this chart. I guess we would use that one. Radical three over three. Don't just copy the chart. Understand how this chart was developed because that's important. But sometimes you have to make it, make it from scratch, okay? What about the cosecant of 30? Cosecant of 30? Too. So, you know, if there were, these questions were asked on a quiz, they would be easy to find. Huh? You could find them pretty easily. All right. So, I think you can, that's all we have to discuss in this section. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and all good things must come to an end.